All right, guys, so this is something that I've seen requested quite a bit, which is remote buttons that control a standard bricks nested slider. So this is on autoplay, and you can see as the slide changes, my button updates. If I use the arrow buttons, my buttons also update. If I use these navigation dots, uh, the buttons update as well. Or I can click the buttons themselves and navigate between slides. So what I'm working on today, all of this slider here is a standard bricks nestable slider. This component up here is what I'm going to look at today and how that works. Now, if you're lucky enough to have something like bricks extras, you can have all sorts of remote controls for sliders and other elements. If you don't, um, then this could be an option for you. Uh, now, I just want to also say that today is the 3rd of the 6th, 2024. And this will be the last video that I'll be doing for a couple of months. Um, I've just got a bit of project work. I've got some lifestyle things that I'm working on. And um, it's going to occupy a lot of my time. So I'm not going to be disappearing, only just uh, being offline for a couple of months. So this will be my last one. I think it's a good one. So I'm going to explain how this all works to you very shortly. I'm not going to go into great detail because uh, I don't have time. But I'm going to uh, share a gist with the... Uh, Bricks template for that. Okay, so if we have a look at the. Uh, one here. All we have, in fact, what I might do is completely clear this page out. Okay, I'm going to add a section, and in that section with my container, I'm going to add a slider. So a standard nestable slider. Okay, there it is. There, in that slider, I'm just going to enable the arrows. So we can see the navigation with that. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to go to my templates. And this is one I'll share with you. I'm going to insert that template. And that's the slide buttons. Uh, let's leave them down the bottom for now. We can always put them wherever we want. So now what we have to do is on our nested slider, we just need to get, in fact, I might just put that inside the container. On our nested slider, we just need to get our ID, that bricks automatically generated for the slider. So grab that. Uh, and then we go to our controller that we just uh, added through the templates into our style, attributes, and we change our data, WPE Splide ID, uh, we change the ID there. So it's the ID without the hatch or pound. And that's all we do there. Save that. And have a look at the front end. Now there is our connected slider. All right. So no matter where we put that, we can move that controller above it if we want to. You can stick it up there, save that, and it's still connected. It's still the same because it's a, it's a remote thing. It's not part of the slider. It's connected remotely to it. We want to change the text on here. We can call this about products or process. And promo, save that. And there we go, we've got about process and promo. That's kind of like tabs, but instead of tab just swapping the pane, it's just changing the slide that the slider is on. We want to add an extra one. We just go to our slider, duplicate our slide there, give it its name there, let's call it slide four. Change the text on that there so we can see that it is actually slide four. And now we've got more slides than buttons. So we go to our buttons, duplicate the ally on our button there, call that something else. Uh, call that, say, test, because I can't think of a better word. Save that. Okay, we now have four slides and we have four buttons to control those slides. Simple as that. So what I'll do is I'll share the, uh, the uh, template here in a gist. Um, in a nutshell, it is a, a UL. Uh, actually, look at this. Look at the DOM. Okay, in a nutshell, it is a UL. Um, and on that, it's got a, a ARIA role of tab list. And we've got allies where our buttons are, and that's got a role of presentation. We've got a button, which has got a role of tab. Uh, ARIA controls it automatically updates to uh, tell it which actual idea of which slide it's controlling. Uh, and we've got ARIA pressed and, and, and data active, which is from the JavaScript. 
And we see if we click on the first one, we now have ARIA pressed as true, data active as true. If we navigate away from that, that's false, that's false. But the next one is true and true. Okay, so we've got our ARIA attributes, we've got a data attribute so we can use for styling, uh, and that's all ready to go. So there is in here a JavaScript here, which you've got to run. So you've actually got to uh, be able to execute the code, render without wrapper. This is the JavaScript that makes it happen. Um, I do have some logic at the top here where it is going to um, do a few things. One is it's going to check whether this is already run. Um, and if it, it has already run, we're just going to return. Uh, if I've got that there somewhere. Let me just check my job. Anyway, it is, but when I share it, it'll have the return in there. So basically, if it's already run, it'll return. The reason we're doing that, let's say we have a, another section on the page. In fact, let's make this section here. Put that. Actually, we're going to add a block here. And I'm going to put all of our stuff inside this block. Okay, so we've got a slider. There, I'm just going to duplicate that. My container here, I'm going to turn that into a grid of uh, three RAM spacing. We'll just do one FR. One F, oh. So we've got two grids right next to each other. Spacing is really off because of that slider. I don't know why it's so wide. Anyway, we'll look at that shortly. Uh, so we've got two blocks, one FR, one FR. Uh, ba -ba. I think I know what that is. It's going to do this uh, uh, repeat to min max zero one FR. It doesn't try to auto calculate. There we go. So when I, that's a perfect example of 1FR, 1FR not working properly because it calculates what it thinks it should be, whereas using a min-max 0, 1FR just makes it as wide as it has to be. So on the second slide, what we're going to do is grab that second slider, grab our ID without the hatch or pound, go to our controller for that slide in our data attribute here for a slide ID. You're going to add the ID for that. Save that. All right. So now we have two slides. This one's connected to that controller. And this one's connected to that controller. OK. So yeah, it works perfectly. And the reason that works is because in the JavaScript, I've got it running the code only once, even though it's in putting it in the DOM twice. It'll only run it once. So my recommendation for you would be with this code is to actually take that code out of the template, put that into your code manager um, and just delete it from this template so that it's only on the DOM once and it only runs once in it. But if you're too lazy to do that and you just want to add multiple controllers, it will work. It will not crash. That is it. That is how it works. I'm not going to explain all the JavaScript today so I don't have time. I'll share this and up to you whether you use it or not but that's it for today that's it for the next couple of months if you like this hit the subscribe hit the like thanks guys